Hello, hello, and welcome to Let Me Bore You to Sleep. My name's Jason Newland, and as per usual, just as I began to make the podcast, screaming people in the garden began their screaming for the day. Yeah, I'm so lucky, I'm so lucky to have that noise to listen to. That beautiful music of really loud people shouting three inches away from each other and other people screaming. Oh, it's brilliant. What a lovely start to the day. It's almost like I dread the day being sunny because they'll be out there. If it's raining, they don't come out. It's so... It's, I must be like the old days, you know, where people get get scared for sundown because the vampires come out. <laughs> it's like that. Anyway, on a less uh, positive note, please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. My website's jasonnewland.com. My Facebook page is Jason Newland's Boring Group. And this recording will be available in six different versions. One without music, five hours and ten hours without music. One with music and five and ten hours with music. So I'm here with Vinny. He's just been licking my feet, so that was nice. Um, so I'm going to talk about the fight. The fight that people, you know, there's, there's only been two fights in my memory, more recent-ish memory, where the general public, who, the non-boxing public, the non-boxing fans, have been discussing it on social media. I mean, I know I'm assuming they're non-boxing fans, but just, like, the general public is kind of caught people's interest. And the first one would have been, no, well, yeah, for non-boxing, I guess the Mayweather-McGregor fight, which is on my birthday about, what, seven, eight years ago? Was it 2017? Blimey, it's quite a while ago now. And then... This weekend, the Mike Tyson against Jake Paul fight. Going to use those words very loosely. It, it, yeah. It, yeah. So it was on. It was on Netflix. And for those in America, and that kind of area time zone I mean from that kind of time zone so maybe Canada America Mexico places like that you didn't have it quite as bad as people in the UK and kind of Europe because the fight was on about 5 in the morning the show started roughly 1 o'clock in the morning had it been in the evening, late afternoon, up to the evening, I possibly would have enjoyed it more because it was just, it was more, I think it was more about the the build up and the excitement and the BS, you know, the lies, the manipulation of the general public. You know, it was kind of about that and it was fun. However... <laughs> However, I said before the fight that I didn't think Mike Tyson should even be in the ring. Not that I have control over what he does. Obviously, I don't. I just didn't think it was a good idea that someone of his age should be... You know, I, I actually personally think that a better 
more exciting fight would have been Mike Tyson having his trilogy with Evander Holyfield. That would have been interesting because of the history of them two and you could argue that that second fight between him and Evander Holyfield was the most famous heavyweight fight at least of my generation people in the 60s possibly would argue saying well actually the fight between Ali and um What's his name? Cooper. Henry Cooper. So that fight when uh, he knocked Ali down and there was a big conspiracy about how long the fight, the, the you know, the break lasted and did Ali's manager or trainer cut his gloves and apparently he admitted to doing it. I don't know if he did or not. I didn't read it with my own eyes. So there was that. But as far as like dramas surrounding heavyweights, Mike Tyson probably has it summed up. I think some of the things he did outside of the ring as well as inside of the ring made him, yeah, kind of added to the securing him as being very notorious and infamous. As well as famous. As well. I think that would have been a more interesting fight. Or even a, a rematch between him and Lennox Lewis. That would have been less interesting. And the good thing about Lennox Lewis is he hasn't come out of retirement to do anything like that. Both Holyfield has... And so, obviously, Tyson's done it twice. Holyfield's done it once. Holyfield got battered around, and it got stopped. Tyson fought Roy Jones a few years back. And that wasn't awful. It wasn't good, but it wasn't awful. And Mike Tyson did look fairly fit in that one. But it was an exhibition, so... He, he, you know, he, that wasn't so bad. It was interesting. And they're both former heavyweight champions. So that was, you know, that was all right. But I think this, I've just been seeing a lot of social media comments about it. And there's a new, I don't know if it's a new thing, but people post, make posts, which they don't say what they're talking about. Do we all assume that we've just got one mind now? We've all been to the same party. Like every, it's like everyone seems to assume that it, we've all been to the same thing, the same event. It's like everyone's been to the Mike Tyson fight. Not everyone, but people that are posting on, on Facebook, for example. They've all been to the Mike Tyson fight and all on the way back from the Tyson fight, and they're posting, well, that was rubbish, that was pointless, that was a waste of time. That, so, it, you know, and everyone knows each other, and they all know that they've been to the same event. That would make sense, because they're all talking about the same thing. But I go onto Facebook, and I'm seeing these comments, and I don't know what they're talking about. And they've been doing that with the... Uh, some political stuff over the last few weeks just making comments and like what are you referring to is there just one mind is it just and I'm not part of it <laughs> maybe <laughs> it's almost like I'm not part of society so like, what are you talk you, 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 you're saying something what are you referencing to because believe it or not that's the opposite to communication just start putting some random thing and thinking oh, everyone's going to understand what you're saying. No. That's the opposite to good communication. That's the opposite to what Facebook was for. 
I'm guessing. I don't know. I mean, you would argue Facebook's just there for making money, but I think originally it was to bring people together and for communication. Now it's for a lot of older people to moan. And all the young people have moved on. They're on what is it, Instagram, is it? Or, or whatever one's TikTok. So it's just left with all the <laughs> all the parents that went on Facebook to spy on their kids 18 years ago. And now they're left on there with each other, moaning. It seems to be what it is half the time. Flying me. Uh, when I joined Facebook, I was only like 35, 36. I was still too old for Facebook back then, but I joined because I wanted to try and promote what I was doing. You know, the whole uh, internet online recordings and stuff. And the videos. But I even knew people that would... They'd say to me, because I've known, I know some adults over the years, and they'd say, my daughter's blocked me. Why? I don't know, I just, I, I went to ask to join her and she just blocked me. Okay. And there was a period when people didn't know they could have their profiles private, or maybe they weren't able to and they changed the, changed the platform. So, parents did go on and spy on their kids and see what they're up to which I do understand a bit I guess you'd want to know make sure your kids are safe so you know I'm not judging that but then kids just realised they could and I say kids just young people of any age really sort of even people in their teens and their early 20s I don't want their parents to see what they're doing at university or who they're doing it with. <laughs> it's just... But then, why are you posting it on social media? And that was another thing. It's like, almost like, I'm posting it, but it's private. It's not private. Yeah, it's private. It's just just with me and my friends. How many people? 3,000. That's not private. If you're posting something to 3,000 people, it's no longer private. It is public property. No, it's not, because... Because it's just for people on my friends list. Okay, let's put it together. Everything that's ever been on the internet stays on the internet forever. Uh, da, 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 da. Everything you post on Facebook la stays on the internet forever. <laughs> A bit scary actually. I think everyone's posted stuff that they don't really want to be reseen. Ten years later, I made some weird videos in the past. Some would argue I still do, but <clears throat> that's what I say to you. So yeah, I, that's I found that a bit weird. The whole like, uh, there's been posts. Well, that was rubbish, then, wasn't it? On Facebook, that was rubbish. He's too old. And other people are saying, Oh, Tyson, let let Jake Paul off. He could have... They're still holding on to the idea that a 50-year-old, 58-year-old man could beat up a 27-year-old man who is physically fit. Like, training as a professional boxer for the last five years. Had what nine fights nine or ten fights as a professional and he's big strong in his prime yeah I'm pretty sure that Mike Tyson could he'd be a handful for anyone outside of the ring because he's he probably he wouldn't be fighting cleanly would he if it was outside of the ring, he'd probably, he, he may well uh, completely demolish Jake Paul. Because he'd probably grab him and just rip his, <laughs> bite him probably. 
So based on that, I, it's this these statements. Like, I thought he was gonna win, and then so I was like, oh, that was a waste of money. What money? It was free. Well, it was free for subscribers. It didn't cost anything extra. It wasn't twenty four ninety nine like a lot of pay per view or thirty dollars or f I don't know how much it is in America. I think it's a. It costs more in America than it does in the UK for pay per view. But then. You know, seventy dollars. I think sometimes I'm pretty sure they had some. I'm going to check this out now. I want to. I'm going to. It's going to bug me if, unless I find out how much. Right. Honest me. I say. Okay. Well, I'm just going to. I'm going to search. Why can't I just search? Okay. How much is pay per view? View sports okay boxing boxing asa right okay so it says uh, it's not unusual for a significant boxing pay per view pay per view to cost between forty nine ninety nine and seventy four ninety nine dollars so. Seventy four ninety nine would be what sixty five pound, perhaps. Okay, so I don't think there's probably a person in this country that I live in that would pay sixty five pound to watch a boxing event, unless they were going to it live. So I'm amazed that people in America would pay that much. Perhaps because everyone's been... Because this pay-per-view's been around a long time in America. It's relatively new here. But isn't it... Don't you think it's strange? Like, you're in America, okay? And, well, if you are in America, and you're paying seventy four ninety nine. My next question... Okay, so absolutely same question, but, uh, okay, right, and this is going to annoy Americans, I'm not doing it for that reason, but I know what the answer is going to be, no, okay, no, I was going to say, how much does it cost in Mexico? Because I'm pretty sure I heard that they pay a lot less in Mexico than they do in America. The Canelo Alvarez fight between him and L. Edgar Belanga, which was in September, eighty nine ninety nine. See, there is no way literally nowhere I think it costs 24 pound here or maybe 19 pound there's no way they wouldn't get away with it here isn't it it's strange isn't it but then they probably wouldn't get away with the petrol prices or the gas gas prices you call it gas over there don't you but the pe petrol prices they wouldn't get away with that in America to what they do here they wouldn't get, get away with the the cost of gas and electricity in America as they do here because we're one of the highest, highest uh, payers in the world at the moment. So I guess it, it works around, doesn't it? It moves around, it depends where you are and what they, what does, it's what the government can get you used to doing, get you used to paying. I mean, without, I just, I mean, we're talking about boxing, this is quite an adult, you know, violent thing and that. But I don't know if you've noticed, but, I see on YouTube videos of police, when I see it on the news and that, police holding down rioters and that, they're still kneeling on people's necks. They haven't stopped doing that. They were doing it before 
you know, the big case that happened a few years ago, and they're still doing it. Kneeling on someone's neck is never going to be a good thing. I mean, it's it's good if you want them to pass out and not move, but they might not even move again if you do it for too long or too hard. And I realised quite a while ago that when they had these cop shows, they have them in this country as well. I know. Do did, did you, did you have a show in America called Cops? We have... Uh, like the police, the the force, or something, or whatever. There's been different shows over the years. Just follows the police, follows them, stopping people, follows them, knocking on people's doors to arrest them, and that. And they go full on now. There's no gentle, gentle. If they're coming to arrest someone, especially if it's for a serious crime which I kind of understand why they have to be ready in that, but they go full on and arrest them in quite a violent way. It's not a nice way they do it. It's not gentle. Even if the person isn't, like, you know, resisting arrest, they won't even give them a chance. They'll bat the door in, grab them, chuck them to the floor, kneel on them and just it's the same way with the rioters in the summer those people that were yeah, they were, they were in the crowd and the police were just going in and just targeting one person which would have been scary I imagine to suddenly have 12 police with truncheons all like coming at you at the same time and then they they surround the person as well, so that no one can film what they're doing. No one can film them kneeling on their neck and probably punching them. It's like, oh, but please don't punch people. Have you seen? Have you seen the the mugshots of criminals? What percentage do you think of mugshots of criminals do they not are they not covered in bruises and cuts on their face? Have you not noticed that? It's like even here someone was and they like they're arrested for something that's not even a violent crime and you see that they're kind of just covered in bruises. And the mugshot is taken as soon as they get to the police station, I think. I'm not an expert on this. They don't wait till six months later. Oh, I forgot to give you a mugshot. Oh, <laughs> well, that's lucky you didn't escape, otherwise you wouldn't know what you looked like. Always covered in bruises, and not always, but generally. But like proper, like, like they'd been in a 12 round fight you know, boxing match, really injured. Police. <laughs> Bless them. Uh, well, I still want them to be there if I need them. Never have been, but I hope, you know, I've never had a problem with the police. They've always been respectful to me, generally. And I've always tried to be respectful to them. It's just a hard, it's one of the hardest jobs that you'd ever have in the world, being a police. Mind you, being a bus driver as well, that's a hard job. But being police, and it's weird because if you're a police, you don't get any, there's no love for them. There is, in the moment maybe, if someone's been, you know, saved and stuff. But it's weird because I think you've got an ambulance driver or paramedic. They spend their whole time saving lives. That's their job, to save lives. And they don't do any harm. Sometimes they're not there in time and they get a hassle and attacked and all kinds of stuff. But the police also save lives. And they also ruin lives. So they kind of, they're, they might be ruining life just by doing their job. 
you know, the person's ruined their own life, but it's just kind of weird, isn't it? It's, it's a mixture. It's like that policeman, off duty policeman that grabbed hold of my friend outside the pe petrol station. He wasn't involved in the whole thing. Uh, basically, he went to the petrol station. His nephew decided to go and steal some beers, which in this day and age in this country is not really a huge illegal offence. I mean, it is illegal, but it's not a big thing. He didn't. He didn't do anything violent, and he didn't. And it was just some probably 10 quid's worth of beers lagers and he walks out the manager comes out and tries to tackle him why they got him on camera just call the police you know it's it's not why you have to go tackle him we dropped all the beers on the floor they all went and burst and popped and that and this off-duty policeman who was either driving past or getting petrol jumped out of his car and started tackling him. So what my friend's nephew did, because he was the one with the beers, he put his hands up and he just laughed at this policeman. He said, you can't, because he was trying to take him to the ground. And he was just laughing at him. Saying, well, you can't, because he's a lot bigger and stronger and younger. You can't, you can't take me to the ground. <laughs> just like, it's just a joke. But he wasn't being violent. He didn't do anything to him. He wasn't abusive verbally. Just like, go away, leave me alone. Because he was drunk. But he, he didn't, he could have, he could have hurt the policeman, but he didn't. And he's put his hands up. And I put my hands up now, actually. And the policeman was trying to push him into the road. In fact, he was pushing him into the road. And because, you know, he still had some, had some, uh, strength, this policeman. And that's when my friend got involved because he stood back. He didn't get involved at all because he didn't even know my, his cousin or his nephew was going to be doing what he did. Because he wouldn't have gone to the petrol station had he known that because that was our regular place that we went to every day. No way in the world would we go with so, just with someone that was going to blatantly steal something. Because then we get associated with that. And we were the, two of the only people from the estate that weren't banned from the place at that time. A lot of people were banned for stealing or aggression. We weren't because we didn't do that. So... Crazy, and so my friend went over and just like I saw it on camera because I, I went to court with him, and the, the lawyer showed me, or solicitor, lawyer, whatever he was. I, show, I saw the footage from the petrol station, and you could actually see because my friend was drunk as well, so he wasn't really in the right, you know. He, but he, he, his from his perspective. He told me this. He, just, he saw his nephew being pushed into the road. And that was it. Because a very, very busy road that leads to the motorway. And, you know, everyone was staring, watching it as well. So people weren't, weren't, didn't have their wits about them to be stopping the car. You know, it's, it's uh, because that can cause accidents itself, can't it? People, what do they call it? It's a word for it, isn't there? shoddy driving and so my friend walked up to him and you can see that he tripped like my friend he tripped and he he, he went it, the policeman said he lunged forward and headbutted him he tripped and fell forward because he was drunk and he didn't headbutt him he might have like grazed him or like banged into him a little bit. It was not a headbutt. And I didn't get a chance to go into court to tell my side and to explain, which I would have said to him. If he'd have headbutted that man, his face would have been split open or his head would have been split open. 
or both their heads would have been split open. That's not, you know, it's not how a head would... Because he wouldn't have done it lightly. He would have done it to hurt the bloke. But he didn't. And he didn't even know he was a policeman. All he wanted was the bloke to leave his uh, nephew alone. He didn't want... He wasn't in the, in the right frame to having, having a, uh, an aggressive fight. And also he'd spent the last 12 years keeping out of trouble. Purposely because he knew... Well, he kept telling me that he'd go back to prison if he ever got into a problems which I didn't really believe, but he was he was right, because they did actually try and put him back in prison. Couldn't believe it. So that's all I could see. So he tripped, he clearly tripped, but of course the, uh, the prosecutors couldn't see that. I could see it. It's, it's almost, it's like you can't not see it. Just look at his feet, look. He trips, he stumbles forward, and... If he meant to headbutt you, it's just weird. If you ever watch boxing, which I have done for decades, even an accidental headbutt on someone that is used to getting punched in the face, like, you know, every day for decades, for like 20 years during their training and stuff, they used to getting hit in the face and in the head a head, an accidental headbutt can absolutely can ruin the fight, can end the fight early. So the idea that he headbutted this policeman twice, apparently, which was just and or he was concussed and he had to go to hospital, it was just lies. It's a shame. I don't know why. I mean, he might have been hit, maybe, I don't know. But he definitely wasn't purposefully headbutted. Because, apart from anything else, that's not what he did. My friend would punch. He didn't headbutt. He was a puncher. He was a boxer, ex-boxer. So that's what he, in, a, in that kind of situation, like in a defence situation, if he was going to have a fight. And something else that people didn't know about him, he would let people punch him. Do you believe that? Yeah, he, I've seen him. I thought again that was a lie. Not a lie, but he told me that that happened in the past. So some bloke with a dog that was being aggressive towards his dog, Logie. And um, Logie was kind of being aggressive back. And this bloke punched my friend in the face like three times. And he said to the bloke, if you do that again, I'm going to have to hurt you. And a bloke walked off. So he wouldn't... He'd stand and take it. And I've seen him take it. He did exactly the same thing shortly before he died. Someone attacked him and he just stood there and let them do it. Because he didn't want to go to prison. It was on... Um, what do they call it? Suspended sentence for a year. So he knew if he did anything, he was going to go back to prison. He was going to serve his... I think they wanted to put him inside for a year. So he literally... That's what he would do. He would allow someone to punch him. So there's no way... First of all, he didn't headbutt people. That wasn't his thing. And he'd only punch if he was really, really pushed it wasn't his normal thing he wasn't an aggressive he used to be but he wasn't aggressive anymore he just wanted a peaceful life and he he would so the way they got portrayed him is if he was the same person he'd been 12 years ago before I'd met him and back then he was a very aggressive person I didn't know him back then And he kept telling me, I can't do anything wrong because I go back to prison. They want me in prison. I said, like, it sounded a bit like conspiracy to me. But when I got into court, they wanted him in prison. I couldn't believe it. There was three judges. I don't know why they had three judges. But they had three of these judges and 
two of them wanted him inside, like there and then. And this was his first hearing, because I was actually in there. Not the first hearing, if, yeah. I was... It was pretty much a shut and dunk case. It was like, they got him on camera. It looked that it's a off-duty emergency worker, which is, a, that's one of the most, that's so serious crime to do. And, and then they believed everything he said against my friend. Most of what happened happened off the camera. So when they moved out, outside of camera, that's when apparently my friend hurt him. Which is kind of ironic because okay, my friend did lose it a little bit. But the bloke kept trying to take him down to the ground. I don't know if he just wanted a little grope or something. I don't know. But he, when I got there, his cousin left. Came and told me. Came and got me. Came and with with the dog said, "Luke's being held down at the at the petrol station. He's being held down by three men." I said, "Well, why are you here then?" He said, "I don't know." I said, "Why? What happened?" He said, "I don't know. Just uh, they just I, I I stole some beers and then they started to." Uh, holding him down like they didn't tell me it was a very short conversation and he said don't go there I said what do you mean don't go there you should still be there what do you mean don't go there so I did I went straight there when I got there there was two people holding him down and there was a really big bloke holding his legs sitting on his legs and I just and then there was uh, this other bloke that was Looked like he was kneeling on his chest. So, my friend's screaming. It was a mixture of angry words and I can't breathe. And I know that's, uh, that's almost like a comical thing to some people now. Like it's the first thing people say if they're held down by the police. I can't breathe, I can't. Well, he had COPD and asthma. He could hardly walk the journey between where I live and a petrol station without collapsing. He did it, and the reason he did it, he went with people. That's why he went with his cousin, because he wanted to go out, but he, he struggled to go out on his own without collapsing. Constantly. he was. He, I remember he came in one day, and I, I met him out the front, and he collapsed into my arms. He'd only he'd been to the petrol station, got back, and he just literally collapsed in my arms. It's like, where's your asthma pump? It's like it was in his flat, so I managed to get him in his flat and that. Another time, he knocked on my door. What's up? He's like, I can't breathe. I said, all right, where's your asthma pump? It's downstairs. He had his coat on, so I know he'd been out. So, why didn't you go into your flat? Uh, so, I just, I I had the key. I went down, got the asthma pump, came back upstairs. He, he inhaled it and everything. Had some water and he got his composure back after about 10, 15 minutes. And I said, why why didn't you just get go into your flat and just use the asthma pump? And he said, I didn't know if I'd make it. I didn't want to be lying there on my own. And collapsing and have no one with me. No one to help me. Which makes me feel very sad now when I think about it. <sighs> anyway, this is supposed to be a nice, nice story making fun of Mike Tyson. I would never make fun of Mike Tyson. Love you, Mikey. Love you. <laughs> it was ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. He, it was just... The, the show itself was good. Uh, and the main, the co-main event, which should have been the main event really, but the co-main event 
was phenomenal. One of the best fights I've seen. It was an all-female fight, but forget that. It was absolutely... Katie Taylor and Serrano. Just wow. It was... It was... I was tired watching it. And so, you know, that was good. It was on Netflix, so... All I did was just resubscribe. Because I had unsubscribed. But I thought, well, I'll resubscribe, watch that, and then I'll probably watch a... Watch a show that I haven't seen before, or, you know... Try and, like, binge watch a, a, a series or something. And the problem, because it was on late at night, well, early hours of the morning for the UK people, I didn't know if I was going to be able to get up in time. So I went online to see whether or not they were going to re-show it. If it was going to just be a live event and that was it, or they were going to leave it on Netflix, and I was reassured, reassured by Google, a little chat with Google, and they said, uh, "Yeah, it's going to be on there for subscribers to watch back if they miss it live." So that was my backup plan. Cause it's it's really hard for I think for a boxing fan. Especially someone that was around when Mike Tyson was in his prime. When he first kind of came onto the scene. It's, I think it's quite difficult for those people. And they'll be my age and older. Because I was only 16 when he won the world title. It's hard to not watch it. It's hard to not watch what he does. Just out of... It's not loyalty, it's interest, I suppose. It would be... I've, it was probably the same for Muhammad Ali. When he fought Holmes, Larry Holmes. He shouldn't have fought Larry Holmes. And that was, you know, that was... my you, the thing is, he was world champion a short time before that. So it wasn't that far off it being a silly thing to do. Let me just check this out. So, Holmes, uh, Ali, Ali, okay. Okay, fair enough. So if I just go to Holmes, there's only one Holmes, and that's, uh, no, Sherlock Holmes, nope, Larry, Sherlock Larry Holmes was first. La Ooh, Larry. Isn't it weird? If you say Larry, it doesn't sound like a boxer, does it? Larry. And the new heavyweight champion of the world, it's Larry. It doesn't, doesn't really fit. It's weird. So, Larry Holmes, 69 wins out of 75 fights. 44 KOs. And you know what's weird? Even though he got absolutely battered by Mike Tyson. No one was ever able to hurt him again. When he came back. So I think he was, he was influenced by George Foreman to come back and make a, you know, Perhaps, I mean, he did get to fight for the world title again. He fought Evander Holyfield for all of the titles back in 92. So he did. And he was beating good people as well along the way. But, and he fought for the world title again against Oliver McCall in 95. Blimey. And he retired in 2002. That's a long, 
a long time. 2002, and he started his professional career in 1973. Wow. 83, 93. Blimey. That's got to be one of the longest boxing careers ever. But anyway, he when he fought Ali, which was 79, was it? 1979, Ali, Ali, 1977, 78, Muhammad Ali, 1980, October. So, Muhammad Ali, let's have a look at his boxing career. Uh, professional boxing record. So, it was two years since he was last world champion, heavyweight champion of the world, and he hadn't lost it. So, he'd won the world title three times, Ali. He lost it to Leon Spinks in February 1978. And he won it back again in 1978, September. And then he didn't fight again. I don't know why. I don't know if he retired. And then two years later, he fought Holmes. Now, in heavyweight years, bearing in mind, bearing in mind he was 38 years old. That's not old these days for a heavyweight boxer. There's older boxers out there. So it wasn't really a mismatch on paper. In reality it was. Because Larry Holmes was the young lion. And he went on to be one of the greatest heavyweights of all time. One of them. Yeah. So, I don't know what my point was on that one. Yeah, those people that loved Ali would have tuned into that fight. Because even though he'd retired and he was nearly 40. But 38, Mike Tyson's 58, 20 years older than Ali was when he got beaten by uh, old Holmes, Sherlock. Blimey. I remember watching that fight. Vaguely. I mean, I was 10. So it's a long time ago. But I remember watching it, yeah? It was a, it was a worldwide event. And even then thinking, why are they letting him take so much punishment? I might not have articulated it in that word, in that kind of uh, language. It might have been, he, <laughs> he's being hurt. He's being hurted. Why do you keep punching him? Why does he keep being punched? But it didn't have an emotional effect on me because I didn't know who the hell Muhammad Ali was. It meant nothing to me. I was being told that he was a superstar. And during my childhood, I did. I used to see him on TV shows and stuff like that because he was a superstar, wasn't he? Let's face it; you can't argue on that one. He was a global superstar, and probably the only global sports superstar up to that point in history that was known all over the world. There probably wasn't anyone else. That was that famous. I mean, some may ar may argue about Pele uh, and you know Kevin Keegan, McEnroe. That's that was the era, though, wasn't it? The eighties, early eighties, late seventies, early eighties, when tennis was massive. Again, some people might say it's still massive. No. You don't you don't understand. 
tennis is not what it used to be. It might be better. It, the players might be better than they were back then. I don't know. I can't. I'm not a tennis player. I don't. I don't know much about the game. But what I can assure you is tennis is not as big as it used to be in the late 70s and early 80s. It was a super sport. It was the stars were huge stars. And so you had Bjorn Borg, Connors and uh, McEnroe, of course. Huge, huge celebrities, McEnroe especially, big, big, like, anti-hero. In, the, in this country, snooker was huge. I would say that snooker was even bigger than boxing. Football has always been the biggest. Nothing's ever matched football in this country during my lifetime. I don't know about other countries. I think of other countries, cricket is bigger than any other sport. And I think rugby would also be bigger than one of the biggest sports, especially in places like India and Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, Pakistan, possibly parts of Africa. Cricket huge huge and rugby huge in places like South Africa in well all over the world but I think especially but Australia New Zealand but then Australia have got their own and they um their own kind of football which is Rugby, is it Australian rules football? I always I got, I got it wrong. I thought they meant that they they're in charge, but what it meant is it's their own rules, not that they they rule football. We now rule football. Australia rules football. We're in charge. We're the boss. And I used to watch that in the uh, middle eighties Australian rules football. It was very popular. It used to be on a Sunday morning on television and they used to beat the living <laughs> they literally would be having full on fist fights on the pitch and that's the reason why it was popular in this country people it was, it was a quite a, a new sensation to see people it was almost like it had no rules it had the wrong shape shaped ball for football obviously because uh, it had a rugby ball, which is the same shape as American football. So, but in England, football and in Spain and Italy and France, all throughout Europe and most of the world, football is a round ball where they kick and they try and get it into the goals either side of the pitch. And they all wear shorts and run around with their little perp bottoms wobbling around. <laughs> and that's. And they get paid extortionate amounts of money for basically doing what little children like to do. So they get, they get paid millions a week for being kids. And then they get into trouble for being immature. When they're off the pitch. Well they're kids. They, if you do that for a living. You're not exactly going to be particularly adult are you? Because. You don't need to be. Because you're, you're playing for a living. You're playing a game. And good luck to them. That's what I say. If you can do what you love doing. And actually earn a living. And earn a good living out of it. Good on you. And if that involves kicking a ball around. If that's what you like, good. I never liked it. I never could never really see the point of it. 
I could see the point of it as in you're supposed to get into the goal. I understand that. Which is why the only real, the part I like in the football is during the, the major events when it goes to penalties. Because that is interesting. That is it. That's exciting. But that's the only exciting part of the whole game for me is seeing I mean, personally I think it should just be penalties have a game which is just penalties have the whole world come together and take turns so each match would just be penalties so France and it'd just be lucky dip France against Belgium and then whoever wins that and just have have like lost then then the next one will be England versus USA and then Germany versus I don't know Spain or whatever but just penalties but maybe 10 10, 10 penalties and that would be it so and if if you don't win a penalty it keeps going until they win because let's face it, what do you do with a draw? You go to penalties. So if you do a draw of penalties, what do you do? There has to come a time though. I think what will happen is if, after they've done the penalties, and if they both save the goals, then they have to go back, uh, maybe 10 foot, and take it from there. Something like that. So, and it has to be a different person every time it's kicked. So I can't have the same person come back and kick it again. Maybe have a different person in goal every time. So I have 10 goalies and 10, 10 kick kickers. Just call it penalties. So if anyone copies this idea for a TV show, because I think it'd be quite popular. I own the rights. I own the rights, okay? Today is Saturday, the 16th of November, 2024. I own the rights to this. This could be worth hundreds of pounds for me. Because you think you could do an entire World Cup in one day, one afternoon. And it'd be a knockout stage, wouldn't it? It'd, it'd probably take, what, two, three hours to get through the whole thing. Make it into a big, a big deal. Maybe have, you know, a band playing. Not like a trumpets and cymbals and stuff, but, you know, like a, a big act. And you could do this thing once a year. I just think it'd be quite cool. Get rid of all the running around. <laughs> so yeah. So anyway, boxing. I think my issue. Well, I said right at the start, right at the beginning, that I learned something when Mike Tyson got beaten the first time in 1990 against Buster Douglas. I believed before that time that Mike Tyson was invincible. Bearing in mind I was 18 years old, I, I believed, I guess I believed what I was hearing and I didn't have enough life experience to realise that, I, I didn't really understand the ageing process but not that that was an issue with him, but I didn't, I didn't realise that nobody is invincible, and everybody will lose eventually. You know, if they keep doing something, it, if you're a boxer, if you keep fighting, you will eventually lose. You might, you might retire a winner, 
but if you kept going, you would eventually lose. When a bloke lost the other day, and he'd been a champion for years, it just it just happens. You just someone else younger, stronger, and wanting it more, hungrier. What comes along, and that's always been, an, I think, an issue with with boxers. I've heard it. People talk about it that if you got someone fighting for their family, you know they're fighting because they've got a newborn baby, and that's why they want to win a world title so they can, especially the lower weights where there's not a huge amount of money, unless you're famous. So they fight, and they get that world title. And that money is going to be enough, maybe, to pay for their house. Not pay the mortgage off, like, get it all done. So it's life-changing money. It might be 50 grand, or 60 grand, or 100 grand, which is a lot of money to the average person. But for a world title, for a world champion, it's not a lot of money. You think they'd all be getting millions, but they don't. Heavyweights do. Canelo does. I think he gets at least 20, 30 million a fight. But he's a superstar, so hey. So there's that hunger. They want to feed their children, they want to feed, make their, help their family out. But then a few years later, they are earning the big money. Maybe they've unified the, t the titles. And they become well known. And they are earning maybe a million, two million a fight. And they do that for a few years. And then someone else comes along. That's got a new baby. Living in a rented accommodation. In a council house. Somewhere they don't like. And they've got a part time, they're working as a plumber. But what they want to do is... Actually, plumbers, well, a good good earning job, isn't it? But they might be working in a job they don't like. And they know that if they win, not only would the world title be about winning the world title, but it would change their life, change their family life. Whether it's a female or a male, it would change their life in a way that even if they don't earn a huge amount of money for that fight, the next fight will be worth a lot more. So they're hungry, like almost literally or emotionally hungry. And there's that person at the top that's maybe been there for a few years and is not hungry anymore, or she's not hungry anymore. They might be still be great, but there also might be something missing. The desire. I mean, I did hear one boxer say, after he got defeated, he said, I, I don't like getting punched anymore. <laughs> I don't like getting punched in the face anymore. It's not as much fun as it used to be. And even current world champions... Or, like, Tyson Fury, he's not, I know he, he was a world champion until a, a while back, but he fights again next month. But even he talks about, like, getting getting punched in the face for money. And he doesn't particularly like getting punched in the face. Which is understandable, really. Can you, can you consider who's punching him? Yeah. It's a very much a boxing related podcast, this isn't it today? So, okay, I was going to dissect the fight. Those that saw it don't need it dissected, and those that didn't see it probably don't care. It was really. If you thought Mike Tyson, that a 20 year old Mike Tyson was going to come out of the corner of the ring and demolish Jake Paul then well you were wrong 
I don't want to use the word delusional, but you were wrong. I'd have loved that to happen. That would have made... If that had happened, I would probably... Wouldn't be able to, I'd probably be smiling for about a week. Because it would just be funny. Especially how cocky Jake Paul is and arrogant and all that. But at the same time, he he's the one that put this all together. It's very successful and he clearly knows what he's doing. But I think my summing it up would be Jake Paul. Jake Paul didn't want to get hit by Tyson. I could see that. But I don't think Jake Paul wanted to get hit by anyone. I don't think he's, he, you know, I don't think he like, I don't, he's a boxer, which he is a professional boxer now, but I don't think he's, I don't think he wanted to get full on punched by Tyson because he's still going to hurt anyone if he manages to really land one. But he couldn't land one. Tyson couldn't land anything really because he was moving around a lot and which I think anyone should do and I think Tyson looked frustrated in there I don't think he even wanted to be there and I'm not sure how healthy it was for him to be in there emotionally just because he's he's worked so hard on himself to calm down as a person and to he's a very spiritual and very wise, very intelligent person. And I don't know how useful it was to go him back. Because you can never go back, really. That's what I realised years ago. You can never really go back. That's why, in some ways, I'm, with what I'm doing here, I'm going forward. Because I know that if I ever stop doing this, let's say I stop doing it for a year, I say I'll have a break, I won't come back to it. Well, actually, to be fair, I don't know, because I have had breaks in the past, but it wouldn't be like this. It, you know, you can't go back. So if I sort of took two, couple of years, three years off doing this, and then thought, I think I'll, I'll go back to main podcasts. No, I don't think it would happen. It wouldn't feel the same. It'd feel weird. It feels familiar because I do it so regularly. But it wouldn't... I don't think I'd enjoy it. I don't think I'd see the point of it. I still struggle to see the point of it sometimes, but I, you can't go back. It's, it's almost like if my friend said, oh, I've I've bought back the comedy club. Do you want to be the DJ? My first answer would be yes, of course I do. But the reality is there won't be behind that DJ booth won't be someone in their late 20s. It'll be someone in their early, in mid-50s. And I'm not sure how much I would enjoy it anymore doing that because I haven't done it for absolutely years. Like 20, 23 years was the last time I did that. It's kind of longer than it has been for Mike Tyson since he was like had after the last professional fight before this one. Nah, I can't go back. That's why I, I could never, I didn't go back to the town that I used to live in because I thought about it. But you can't go back. It's this can't go back in time, can't redo anything. All we, all we can do is go forward. So, yeah, I think it was, it was interesting, 
but ultimately the only winners was Mike Tyson and Jake Paul really financially and probably Netflix but I'm not sure how much Netflix, how many people actually watched it I don't know it wouldn't have done Netflix any harm I don't think if it had gone bad then yeah it would have caused it might have caused Netflix problems you know if if because uh, I, I did I was watching Mike Mike Tyson I was thinking well he's clearly out of breath he's hardly moved but he's out of breath and a lot of that could be that there's so much pressure isn't there be on him a huge crowd I think there was like 70 or 75,000 people in the audience plus at least 30 or 40 people watching it on Netflix maybe a few more than that probably millions and millions And it was just like, oh, okay. Because that's another thing. The only opponent, like Jake Paul can honestly, he can say, the one thing he can hold his hand up and say, and it's truthful, is uh, two things. He's earned the most money out of any of Mike Tyson's opponents fighting him. True. The second one, other than the age gap, that's an obvious one. The second one would be that he's the only fighter that fa faced Mike Tyson that smiled when he was in a ring with him. Because none of Mike Tyson's opponents smiled. Even if they were cocky before they got in the ring, they didn't smile once they were in the ring. Even the ones that beat Tyson didn't smile when they were in the ring. Because everybody got a hard time from Tyson. That's what seems to be forgotten. Even the people that beat Mike Tyson really took... They had a hard time. Because they had to, they had to overcome the first few rounds where they were being... They got hurt. Every boxer that went in the ring with Mike Tyson when he was a, like a professional fighter. Everybody got hurt by him, even those that won. Even when he was past his past his prime, I was going to say sell by date, that's a bit rude, isn't it? Even when he was past his prime, which he hit his prime at 20. He was past his prime for a long time before he retired. Yet he was still able to demolish most people in the heavyweight division. So, what's next, do you reckon? Lennox Lewis? There isn't anyone, is there? Maybe Holyfield. Holyfield and Tyson, the third, third fight. I'd watch it just for fun because at least it's even you got two people who are both I think Holyfield's 59 maybe older I think Holyfield is actually older than Tyson so you got two of the greatest heavyweights of all time I mean I'm just happy to see them hug at each other after what they went through, it's nice to just see them being friends. It's weird, I don't know. What do you reckon? If you watched it. It was... I was... I was disappointed in a sense of... In my wildest fantasies, I was hoping it was going to be good. I knew reality-wise it wasn't. But, you know, from a fantasy perspective, Mike Tyson has suddenly become the old Mike Tyson instead of the old Mike Tyson. The younger version, and he would... Because that's what's weird about this, is... 
Jake Paul probably wouldn't have lasted around with Mike Tyson at the end of his career when he was 38. So when Mike Tyson retired after losing for the last time, that version of Mike Tyson would have knocked Jake Paul spark out. I've no doubt on that one. So the reality is, because you think about it, it's like, okay, I, I don't think of what Mike Tyson could do, but I think of Mike Tyson's opponents. How many of those fighters that Mike Tyson beat in his older days or that beat him, you know, because it was close, would Jake Paul be able to stand up against? None of them. They were all huge heavyweights. And like Etienne was one. There was no way Jake Paul would stand up to him. Um, Danny Williams, although he did beat Tyson, Danny Williams, Jake Paul wouldn't have stood as... as He'd have had no hope against Danny Williams. At all. That's the reality. Look at the heavyweights today. How would how would uh, Jake Paul fare against... Fabio Wardley? It's just a joke. You wouldn't even consider it, would you? Be honest. If you if you know boxing, would you even even consider Jake Paul to be? Well, he wouldn't be allowed to fight those people anyway. But imagine if he was facing Tyson Fury, or if he was facing Daniel Dubois, or if he was facing Derek Chisora. Or if he was facing Fabio Wardley. Or if he was facing Joe Joyce. Or Zhang. Or Wilder. Or Hergovic. Or any of them. Jake Paul wouldn't, wouldn't be able to handle any of them. And that's not even a guesswork. That's, it's almost in factuality. Because they're just he wouldn't be able to I don't think it's, it would be possible so you say well he's not a true heavyweight it, he was fighting a light heavyweight before ok so there's let's say so. ok so let's not go heavyweight let's go lightweight hmm uh, Dimitri Bivol <laughs> I wonder if he'd if he'd give Dimitri Bivol a, a problem Biotabev Bev, would you reckon the unified light heavyweight champion of the world? Do you think you'd be able to give him a? Come on, it's like in reality, no. He's good for what he is. He's definitely the best YouTube boxer, and he's got a great punch. But he's not. He's not. He hasn't yet. I, you know, I think if he'd have just gone down the normal route and had like five, six, seven, eight fights a year and built up his experience, it'd be it'd be a better boxer, and he might, you know, he might have managed to get to interim world title. I don't know. Possibly, he might have got. He probably would have won some medals, some kind of you know, belts. But he wouldn't have made... He's making more money than the world champions, isn't he? Good on him. 40 million he made, apparently, for this fight with Tyson. 40 million. The only people that earn more than that is... That's like heavyweight world championship winnings. As the kind of money that Usyk and Mike Tyson and Josh, not Mike Tyson, and Tyson Fury and Joshua, that's the kind of money that they get. 
when they defend their world titles, you know, during their world title fights, like huge money. So good on him. I think it's it's brilliant for them. But they're the winners. The only winners. There was no loser out of the two in the ring. Mike Tyson didn't lose anything. He won. Maybe a bit of respect, but you can't disrespect anyone of that age, really. He he did it. There's not many 50 or 8-year-olds would be willing to... Actually, for that amount of money, probably every 50 or 8-year-old in the world probably would be willing to do it. If you say to any average 50-year-old, 58-year-old, will you get in a ring with Jake Paul for 20 million? Yep. It doesn't matter. It, let him, it can knock me out in two seconds. I don't care because I've got 20 million at the end of it. So, yeah, I guess pretty much anyone would say yes. And a few of those would probably give him a hard time. Because there are some 50 or 8 year olds out there that are fighters. Like, they've always been fighters. They didn't stop fighting 20 years ago. They're the ones that would give Jake Paul a proper time, proper hard time. Because they're just battering. Because it's weird, isn't it? Because they're active, actively doing it. Oh, well. I'm just talking rubbish, really. But I think the truthful thing is the only winners were them. The fans were winners when it came to the undercard. That was a phenomenal fight between Serrano and... Uh, What's her name? But I don't... Yeah, the main one. I was kind of glad when it was over so I could go to bed. It sound, might sound weird, but I, I, I woke up. So I went to bed after Big Brother. Because the final of Big Brother. Woke up Saturday morning. So I went to bed Friday night. This morning, I, I went to bed listening to the radio, so I was in bed by about 11, and I thought, if I wake up, I'll wake up, if I don't, I'll just watch it on playback, doesn't matter, I'll just make sure I don't listen to the news or go online so I don't know what the results was, even though I knew what the results were going to be, but I just, all I hoped for that, that no one got hurt, that was my hope. So I was woken up by this little fellow about three o'clock. And I thought, oh, I might as well get up. The The main fight will be on in an hour, which it wasn't. I think it was started at five. So I had enough time to to start from the beginning, watch it, watch all the other fights, skip through the muff and just basically go straight to the fights without having to actually listen to any of the the muff that was going on talking about oh blah, 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 all that didn't have to listen to national anthem and it was great i could just go right through to then getting ready to fight I did watch the bit at the beginning when they were in the ring because it was interesting. I wanted to see the body language and see how they were being. I knew what Jake Paul was going to be like because he's always the same. But I didn't know what Mike Tyson was going to... Uh, I didn't know how he was going to be because... Well, it's by far the biggest, the biggest event he's been part of for a very long time since... The fight with uh, Lennox Lewis in 2002, was it? 2001, 2002? 2002. That's the last big event, like huge event that Mike Tyson was part of. Because that's when he fought for the world title. And it was to unify the world title, wasn't it, I think? 
because didn't he have some belts himself? Yeah, I think so. I, did he? I'm going to have to check that one out as well. Blimey. So this is Mike Tyson. So Mike Tyson fought Lennox Lewis. Mike Tyson. Trevor Burbick. Okay, Trevor Burbick. I like to, sometimes I do this. So professional boxing records. So I know who fought who. So I go back and find them. So this 89, 86, 86. You know what annoyed me? I didn't find this out until afterwards. People were like moaning about Trevor Burbick being rubbish because of how he was beaten by Tyson. So, because he, he gave Tyson, Tyson gave him spaghetti legs, didn't he? Well, the fact is, he wasn't rubbish at all. He just happened to face in the most vicious heavyweight of our generation. That's what happened there. He was known as being a bully, actually, in fact. And he had quite a few good... He had... Pinkland Thomas was the person he beat, before, who he won the title from before fighting Mike Tyson. And Mike Tyson himself considered Pinkland Thomas to be one of the greatest... That's why when he, he didn't really want to fight him. And when he did fight him, he wanted to end it quick because he had so much respect for him. He was actually... Pinkland Thomas was one of Mike Tyson's heroes. And Trevor Burbick beat, Mike, beat Pinkland Thomas the fight before Tyson. So, yeah. And he also fought Larry Holmes for the world title... In 1981, so five years earlier, and it went the distance. You don't get to fight Larry Holmes for the world title in 1981, and that was when Larry Holmes was at his absolute peak. You don't get to take him the distance if you weren't good. That's all I'm saying on that. You also fought John Tate, knocked him out. Well, was, so he wasn't a nobody he was portrayed at the time as being useless because of what Tyson did to him but that's not fair anyway what was I going to say Tyson, Tyson, Tyson 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 right he fought Tyson where did he fight Tyson? 1986. I don't know why, I just, it's, it's buggy. If I, if I get these ideas in my head, I'm like, I need to know what the answer is. His middle name's Gerard. Mike Tyson. Michael Gerard Tyson. Professional record. Okay. So he fought. Lennox Lewis, June 2002. Ah, uh, oh, okay, got you. Okay, I realise where I am now. So yeah, he did lose his titles. Because when he got out of prison, Mike Tyson actually won two world titles. That seems to have been forgotten as well. Did you know that? He beat Frank Bruno in 96 to win a WBC world title. And then he fought Bruce Seldon again in 96. And he won a WBA heavyweight title. And then he fought Evander Holyfield for the first time and lost... Lost a WBA heavyweight title, so he must have given up the WBC. And of course, he fought Van Holyfield again, and he forgot to have a snack first before getting in the ring. Right. That's what him and Vinny have got in common. They're both like, like ears, like eating ears. Uh, grim. 
So I say good luck to them. That's what I say. But they were the winners. The audience were the winners with the... If you didn't get to see... If, you, if you're hearing people going, Oh, Mike Tyson fight was terrible. And it was. And you're not watching it because of that on Netflix. And you're a member of Netflix. I'm not getting paid by Netflix, by the way. And if you do like boxing, then I suggest you watch it. Skip forward, watch both the fights before Tyson were good. But the, the ladies fight with Serrano and Katie Taylor was phenomenal. It was exceptional, an exceptional fight. It's worth watching that. If you like boxing, go go watch that. The Tyson fight, if it's, it was novelty, but I know some people say, well, women, women fighting is a novelty. It's not so much anymore. It was, but it's kind of, I would say it's pretty much established now with the likes of Katie Taylor and Serrano and... I keep wanting to say Serrano Williams, but um, that's a tennis player, isn't it? Yeah, but there's there's been a few, quite you know, big a few big names in in female boxing. I think it's really in it's still in its infancy. I do. That's my that's my cardigan, by the way. That zip. It's still in its infancy. And I reckon within the next, it's my predict, if I was going to get into boxing as a promoter, I would focus on the women because that is going to be, they're going to be the future stars. Because if you think about it, right, I don't know. If, if this was the nineties and female boxing was at the same stage as it is now in the early 90s okay so we go back to the early 90s boxing is ex exactly the same stage as it is now with uh, Katie Taylor and all, all the names that are around now and then on the scene comes a new boxer called Pamela Anderson I mean, it's just, I know it's, it's, she would be the biggest star in sport because she was the biggest star on television. She was a huge star, wasn't she, in the early 90s? I mean, there wasn't really anyone bigger than Pamela Anderson at the time. And when I say bigger, I mean, like, in popularity. Da, 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 da. So... So that's what I think. What's going to happen is going to be there's going to be two 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 women will be really really popular. One will be some kind of supermodel who will suddenly everyone will fall in love with and she'll be the darling of the world and the fact that she's boxes she'll also be probably starred in movies and whatever. So that will that will happen. But also I don't want to say the word beast, but I'm thinking of it in a sense of um, the way Mike Tyson was a beast. But there's also going to be a female version of like Butterball come along, Butterbean rather, who's just going to be, and I don't mean this rudely, but she'll be heavyweight and she'll be like a tank. That sounds rude, and I don't mean it rude. I mean, because heavyweights is a heavier, it's a heavyweight. It's standard. If you're lightweight, you're lightweight. If you're heavyweight, you're heavyweight. So, but there's going to be that absolute monster. And again, it sounds wrong when you say it about a woman. If you said it about a man, no one would blink an eyelid. You know, an absolute monster, a tank. Is, if you say it about a a woman is like it sounds disrespectful and I don't mean it disrespectfully 
is gonna be gross. Now, again, it's, I don't mean that horribly. Just it's gonna, it's gonna be this big. It's it's gonna be like really strong, um, like a female weightlifter kind of type body. I mean, which is lovely, I'm sure, and like a <laughs> a, a, a Russian weightlifter, female weightlifter. I, I, mean, I don't mean sumo wrestler, but it, again, I'm not sumo. See, if you said, oh, she looks like a sumo wrestler, it's like that's disrespectful towards a woman. But if you say a man looks like a sumo wrestler, well, perhaps he is a sumo wrestler. There are female sumo wrestlers, you know. I don't know if that's true or not. But that's what I think there's going to be. Okay, okay. A really powerful, super strong female heavyweight that's going to knock everyone over. Roll roll over, not roll over everyone, but not roll onto them. It's, it's again, I'm talking about, I don't mean it in a weird way, just, it's, all I'm saying is there's going to be someone, <laughs> dig, 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 there's going to be someone that's going to be, Oh, it's going to be a horror show. <laughs> Again, I don't mean it in looks wise. I mean, it's just, it, they're going to be knocking people out and in a way that's never been seen before. I mean, Serrano William, no, Serrano, she's knocked out about, got 35 knockouts. I think she's got the highest rate of knockouts of any boxer, a female boxer ever. But this is going to be on a new scale. And then what will happen is, I, this is this is my theory. What will happen is people will start to think. I wonder. Hmm. First of all, it'll be like, is it? Is it trans? Is it? Tra is she trans? Rather not it. Is she trans? You know that you know the way society is now, trying to find a reason. Oh. really kind of focusing on the body and like I think I saw something there and I, I know you know that, but hopefully it wouldn't happen but then I think there would be that 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 point where the question would come can they do a crossover fight between the female heavyweight champion and an actual female, no, between a female champion and the male heavyweight champion can, because I've met, I, there was a woman that lived where I lived when I was a kid, no man would take her on, she'd beat any man up, seriously, she's, she was scared, I was friends with her so I was okay. But she was scary, and no one would take so someone like that would be that'd be interesting. Someone like as big as Tyson Fury, maybe, but a female version going against someone the size of Usyk. Mind you female boxers, world champions have gone in the ring with just inspiring with average male boxers and been hurt by them. I didn't expect that would happen. I, I just assumed that the female boxer as a world champion would be way better than like someone that wasn't at that level, but it didn't seem to be the case. Also saw something on YouTube where this Raw Marine, it was, it was a Raw Marines in America, like a boxing thing. And anyone could just get in the ring and call out people or say, come on, who, who wants to have a fight? And a female boxer got in. It was all men in the order. It was all men doing the boxing, but a female came in and said, come on, I'll take anyone on. And 
she definitely I mean she gave it a, gave it her all but because it was a Marines they just let it keep going they wouldn't stop it and this bloke really went for it I suppose maybe he saw it as an opportunity of a lifetime I don't know but to do that and not get go go to prison for a long time but it's weird so I, I think the mentality is there's no difference between men and women in the forces it's equal isn't it and as it should be really in all situations I think you know equality I'm, I'm big in equality apart from when I'm not I'm in a, into equality I think even though I'm a boxing fan or a pacifist I was really into I mean my friend I've got a friend a female friend it's his mum she told me that I'm more feminine than her and I said well that's not hard to, not hard really is it so I had to have a, my comeback I had to say something but the reality is I'm I'm not a particularly masculine person not really not not in the sense of like the traditional BS kind of macho person I mean I, I suppose because I've got i probably got no testosterone left at my age probably not I mean I get angry I don't get aggressive I just get redder I just go go more red in my face that's it so yeah anyway that was my take on the Tyson Mike Tyson Jake Paul fight it was it was what it was and I wish them both luck and happiness and loving kisses and cuddles on that note I'm going to go what the heck have I been talking about thank you for listening remember to be kind to yourself because you do deserve to be happy be gentle with yourself lots of love bye relax in a more deep and meaningful way maybe in a way that can not just allow you to feel calmer now and throughout the time we spend together here not just relaxed at the end of the recording when it's finished and you can enjoy that sense of comfort and peace but also I think it would be nice to have those feelings of relaxation continue for longer after the recording is ended. So that you can still benefit from listening to my voice maybe in a few hours time perhaps tomorrow and then by listening regularly especially if you find like some people do, and myself as well. I, sometimes I find one particular recording that really resonates with me. 
and I'll just listen to it over and over again. Like every morning, every evening. There was this recording from, we're going back to about 1999. It, was a, it wasn't hypnosis, but it was a guided visualization. So it kind of was hypnosis, really. And I managed to find it again, and it still has the same effect on me. And part of it was... person's voice relaxed me. It just felt so peaceful. And I'd look forward to listening to her in the morning and in the evening. And I knew before even pressing the play button that as soon as I'd done that, pressed the play button, this was in the days of CD players, press the play button. In fact, it might have even been a tape, tape recorder. I'd lie down on the bed and then even without necessarily listening to her words because I had them memorized really. It was as if my body knew exactly what to do. And the muscles just almost went into automatic relaxation. And I remember my mind would slow down. Now, now I was, I was listening to this recording in the early days of learning hypnosis. And long before I ever made any videos or audio recordings myself because I didn't start doing that till 2006 but I knew I knew how helpful I found Being able to just let go, to have that trust in the person that I'm listening to. Knowing that it's going to be just as relaxing, if, if not more so each time you hear my voice. You may feel the same. Some people have been listening to me for over a decade. Maybe not solidly, obviously not 24 hours a day, but maybe people come back. Some people maybe listen every day.
And something that I do, which you may not realise by listening, is when I record these recordings, now for example, I also am affected by the words that I say. So if I said to you, focus on your feet, notice your feet relaxing, I will be focusing on my feet. I will be noticing my feet relaxing. If I said focus on your hands and maybe notice the difference between each hand. Perhaps notice the, the air in the room, the temperature of the room on the backs of your hands. You may start to notice what almost feels like a very light breeze, even though they're may not be any type of breeze at all where you are right now. And as you become aware of your hands, I'm also aware of how relaxed my hands are feeling now. And when it comes to potentially drifting off to sleep, which may be the reason you're listening. I also feel drowsy when I make these recordings. I also notice my mind drifting. In fact, at times, I've actually fallen asleep. Without even noticing. And then I carry on talking. It's only when I listen back to do the editing, I hear snoring, and I think, I don't remember snoring, I remember talking, was it snoring or was a pig turned up? That's what I sound like when I snore. And I get really into the whole experience. And 
I don't know how you feel. How relaxed you feel in your feet. How relaxed you feel in your hands. noticed more and more that the more relaxed, deeper level of comfort you feel, the easier your breathing becomes. It's almost like that additional muscle relaxation. This allows you to breathe easier. without necessarily focusing on your breath. However, being able to notice ease in which you breathe so naturally Breathe so very easily and smoothly. My breathing, improving, when I've got my eyes closed. I tend to visualize beautiful field with trees and flowers producing all that life-giving oxygen. Feels nice. To, if nothing else, just taking some time away from everything.
enjoying. That feeling of peace, serenity. with a joyful heart. Time seems to just Drip by so very slowly. completely unattached to any thoughts whatsoever in this moment. Completely free. Noticing that your mind has slowed down slowed down Because nothing really requires your attention. You can enjoy physical sensations of allowing the stress to drip out of your body. Drip in out of every part of your body. And being released from your 
your brain. Muscles in your legs. Relax. Pleasant feelings in your arms and shoulders. Deepen in each part of your body. Further and deeper and deeper. In the feelings in the back of your neck, Feelings in your wrists, Muscles in the front of your body, are also feeling. Deeply as 
There's a sense of peace. Spreads through your very core. Focus on your mind. Your mind becomes even slower. slow your stomach in your stomach your back Notice how relaxed you now feel. spine, from your brain all the way down the middle of your back, sending and receiving millions of messages every day. Deeply relaxed.
your knees. Spreading those signals down your spinal cord into every part of your body. Your shins and your calf muscles. Feelings of peace and tranquility spreading through your body. Tips of your toes to your eyes, your fingers. All the way to your lower back. And letting go. Really letting go. Just wandering away. Happy to let go. Let go. Completely. Let go. So tranquil. sense of let 
Sim, cara. E renovou. Enjoying the space, this space of peace and safety. Letting go. Maybe we can just focus on the different parts of your body. Just to notice the 
forehead and your eyes. Noticing a sense of complete freedom. Absolute freedom. Peaceful energy. have noticed your mind drifting
moving even more deeply. In the direction of total blissful peace. Go. body body feels almost invisible.
And you could start to notice that you are feeling more relaxed. Even though I've not purposely focused your mind upon that sense of physical comfort that is growing within you throughout your body. And your mind starts to slow down. And that could be almost in recognition of, I guess, my speech not being particularly fast. And things just generally feel calmer just by listening to my voice you give yourself a, an opportunity to take a break from the day take a break from your life as it is and to give yourself a rest giving yourself permission to take some time off and to allow your body to relax and allow your mind to slow down which in turn releases the tension any stresses that you had in your body almost as if the parts of your body just open up allowing the negativity out and at the same time replacing that negativity with positive healing energy which then fills your body up and your mind to also starts to appreciate those feelings of increasing confidence and an almost uplifting feeling positive healing an energy that spreads through your body like a wave of comfort and all this comes from just allowing yourself a few minutes maybe half an hour, however long you want it to be, to just rest. And allow your mind and your body to almost reset itself to the, to the settings of comfort, and relaxation, calmness, the 
which allows more room for feelings of pleasure and happiness to move around your body and into your mind almost as if your mind and your body are sinking together almost mirroring each other with that growing positivity and calmness and it feels nice it really does feel nice to know that you are the one that has allowed yourself to feel more comfort and to experience more of this deep relaxation spreading throughout your body. And as I focus on each part of your body, you can notice that that part becomes even more relaxed just by focusing on it. It becomes even more calm and comfortable just by focusing and as I move down your body starting at your head the parts that you've already focused on will continue to relax deeply and those parts that we've not yet focused on will just automatically release any remaining tension in anticipation of even more comfort about to come. Now, I'm going to start by focusing on your forehead. Just being aware of the feelings of your forehead. And any background sounds, like Mr. Herbert the Pigeon, can just allow you to feel even more relaxed. It just means you're in the moment. This isn't this isn't a sterile environment. This is the world. I live in the countryside. So there's lots of nature sounds around. So as you focus on your forehead, just notice how it becomes even more relaxed as you focus only on my voice and that part of your body. Moving down to your eyes, focusing on your eyes, noticing how the, your eyelids feel feels so heavy, yet so light at the same time, and all the muscles around your eyes relaxing completely, moving your focus down to your mouth, your lips, your tongue, your teeth and your gums and the whole of your mouth relaxing calm and loose as 
you focus now on your jaw, not just the parts of your jaw near your mouth, or your chin, but all the way up the sides of your face to your ears, that whole of your jaw, feeling in on your neck, the front of your neck and your throat, relax in and loose and calm, the sides of your neck, the right and left side of your neck. in on the back of your neck, letting go of any tension that may have been there before, and enjoying that sense of increasing comfort and release experience in the back of your neck, moving down your back, moving either side of your spine, right from the top of your back, all the way down to the bottom of your back. down to your lower back, and as you move up and down your spine, you can feel the muscles either side of your spine relaxing even more. As those muscles relax, that sense of comfort starts to spread outwards from your spine into both sides of your back, the top of your back, the middle and your lower back, and as you scan gently and slowly up and down your back as the muscles in the top of your back relax and become looser, the muscles in the middle of your back also seem to just almost divide from each other separating and almost melting. And in your lower back, there seems to be an extra special feeling of comfort. spreads into your hips, so down your lower back and into your hips, into the area where your coccyx are, and into your buttocks, 
and all those muscles that spread from your lower back into your hip area start to melt start to really let go on your shoulders, your back and your spine will continue to let go, continue to relax, so calmly, and as you focus on your shoulders, they're already feeling really loose. They're already feeling Those muscles that move from your neck into your shoulders. Feel so soft and gentle, so smooth. feeling in your shoulders seems to spread deep into your shoulders that sense of relaxation not just traveling deeply into your muscles but also Relaxing the bones, and moving all the way to underneath your arms, relaxing that whole area between the tops of your shoulders and underneath your arms, healing. so relaxed and comfortable in your shoulders, which sends that deep healing message. You may feel almost as if your arms are not even there because they're so relaxed, so deeply relaxed. So
spread in all the way down your arms to your elbows, including your elbows. forearms and your wrists feeling so heavy yet at the same time so light and gentle Now on your hands, a sense of real peace it just seems to feel so familiar tips i 
muscles in your thighs. Your knees. Muscles and your shins completely
start counting down now from 20 down to 1 you can imagine in a way it's like just walking down some steps and each step all 20 steps and each step represents a level of comfort Each step represents a deepening of that comfort. And the further you, you walk down those steps, the deeper and more relaxed you feel. So starting with number 20, Seventeen. Sixteen.
14. Thirteen.
six.
as you focus on your eyes. I'm going to count down from ten down to one. Focus in just on your eyes. Your eyelids, the muscles around your eyes, your eyeballs themselves, that whole area that makes up your eye. And as we count down from ten, to focus in on your eyes. You'll become twice as relaxed with each number counting down. And you may find do is just drift off to sleep and if that's what you want then just allow yourself to do that now focus in on your eyes to begin counting down from ten down to one. Right now. Ten.
So counting down from ten to one, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one. And maybe that was a bit too quick in order to relax. Maybe it's a bit too fast for you to notice the calming of your body. Maybe even a little bit of pressure there like 
and you're counting down from 10 to 1. What do you expect me to do, man? You expect me just to go all floppy just because you're counting down? I could try it again, but this time I'll go a bit slower. This time, I you focus on the whole of your body before we focus on your legs. Just notice how your body does start to feel more relaxed. With every number that I count down. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Just notice how how you feel generally, how your body feels. It's not necessarily even about counting down from ten to one. It's that space that you have that space between being active physically or mentally to just sitting or lying down or just being there not doing anything not saying anything not needing to think about anything so it, op it opens up a space you know a bit of a space a gap and the more I count down from 10 to 1 the bigger that gap becomes so there's that gap of calmness of comfort, of relaxation. It's a nice feeling. And it moves those stresses or discomforts physically or emotionally, moves them away. allows you to just slow down. So I'm going to count again from 10 down to 1 and notice that gap widening. The gap. And 
as it widens, it's almost like the the stress and the tension falls into the gap. It gives you that distance, that space. Seven, six, How does your body feel now? Can you notice the, that you're feeling calmer? Feeling more relaxed. As we now focus on the legs. Just your legs. We're just going to start with focusing on your thighs. course it's not the most exciting thing to be doing because I'm, I'm sure like most of your body there's not a lot going on right now just focusing on the whole of your thighs the tops of your thighs the sides of your thighs, the bottoms of your thighs, your outer thighs and your inner thighs. Basically the whole of your thigh that leads into your hip. And then go 
loose down to your knee joints. Now this is a big area. It's a very heavy area. It's very strong. Probably the strongest muscles in your body are in your thighs. I don't think we perhaps we give enough attention to our thighs. Perhaps we don't acknowledge how important our thighs are to our lives. how much they actually do for us all through our lives. It may seem or sound really weird, but I think that all of our body parts, especially our thighs, need some TLC. A bit of love shown. A bit of acknowledgement. A thank you. Gratitude for what our thighs do for us. And I know this may sound a bit strange. Maybe you think, why am I? Surely I should be out in, in the garden hugging a tree or something. Or it's hard to set a microphone up on a tree. That's why I'm doing this indoors. Otherwise I would be outside hugging a tree. No, I can't see the television from the tree. You move down to your knees, again such an important part, and I think we don't necessarily, I'll speak for myself here, I don't necessarily appreciate all that my knees do for me until I have a problem with my knee, so occasionally if I have a Maybe I bash it or it's aching for some reason. It's then that I realise how much it does. You know, the benefit of being able to use my legs without any kind of physical discomfort is a beautiful thing. That's possibly not appreciated until... It's temporarily removed, you know, that comfort. But as you focus on your knees, regardless of how your knees feel, you can have that sense of gratitude and love to your knees for all that they do for you. you can still have that attention on your thighs maybe notice how your thighs feel maybe you've noticed that they are relaxing more deeply as you focus now bottoms of your legs, your shins, 
and the calf muscles, the bones between your knees and your feet, incorporating of course your ankles, so important. head, even the, like the slightest sprain of an ankle, knows how, how much we take our ankles for granted. And it's kind of strange in a way when you think that, you know, logically our wrists are a lot thinner than the rest of our arms which is okay doesn't can't see any problem with that because we're just picking stuff up but our ankles are so much thinner than the rest of our legs and from a physics perspective or logical even it doesn't really make sense that all this weight would ultimately be resting on your ankles, then leading to your feet. That thin area, thin bone. Yet it does so much great work. Supports us, supports our body for a lifetime. Helps us to balance, helps you to get around and be mobile. And there's the calf muscles, of course. <laughs> when I was younger, I couldn't see the point in calf muscles. They didn't seem to do anything. Okay, if I walked around on tiptoes, then my calf muscles get some work. But of course that's not true. The calf muscles are being used whenever we use our legs. And your shins. They're to protect your lower legs. shaped in a way almost as a protector for the bone leading of course to your ankles and your feet but we're not going to focus on your feet we're just going to focus on the legs and I realize that now that I've mentioned your feet, you're probably focusing on them anyway. So maybe I should focus on your feet a little bit. You can have them in your awareness. The same as you have your thighs in your awareness, even though we haven't been focusing on your thighs for a few minutes. You've been focusing on your ankles. There's still that sensation of comfort in your thighs. Almost that movement of energy because the thighs hold lots of different sensations. Of course, there's the muscles, the big, strong muscles that we have in our thighs. But the skin on the outside of the thighs, as in the outside of all of our body can be very sensitive. 
sensitive to the touch, sensitive to temperature. And inside your thighs, the bones, there's the muscle, there's the blood vessels, the arteries. So all this stuff is inside your thighs. And I guess sometimes it'd be nice if you could actually put your fingers inside your thighs and massage. So you can massage on the outside, of course, but to be able to get deep into the muscles, to be able to just massage inside your thighs, massaging the bones of your leg, massaging all the veins and just gently healing your thighs. could move down, massaging inside your knees, just massaging those bones, but with healing fingertips, spreading that healing energy deep into the joints of your knees, and of course there's the back of your your knee, you know, the inside crease where your knee is. It's a very sensitive area. Very feels very nice when you stroke it. That might be because it's an area that's not really touched very often. It's almost like a hidden part, that crease in your legs. It's almost like a part that has a, a sensitivity which is a little bit different. Of course it's protected by your legs. So you can imagine putting your fingers into that crease in your legs. in between your legs, you can just massage with your fingertips, imagine your fingertips going inside, massaging the muscle tissue, you can of course feel the, the bones of your knees healing through your fingertips. And then as you go down to your calf muscles, now that's a part I'd like to be able to really put my fingertips deep inside my calf muscles, massaging every single tissue of that muscle, healing every part. The same for my shins, massaging and gently stroking the bones, gently stroking them, healing in a loving way because they deserve to be treated as the precious bones that they are. Because our legs are so precious, as in all the other parts of our body. They're more precious than any jewel on the planet. And then when you start to think about your legs in this way, if you change your perspective, sound a bit a bit silly to start with the 
gonna do is having love a few licks showing appreciation for your thighs wanting to be able to put your hands in your thighs and massage the muscles and the bones and to get your fingers deep in there releasing all tension just to show how much you care about your legs how much you care for what your legs do for you regularly your knees your calves your ankles the strength of your ankles considering how thin they are compared to the rest of your legs especially your thighs it is so strong so flexible absolutely amazing things your ankles are truly a gift because of what they do for you supporting all that weight regardless of how what weight you are even if you're only eight stone still a lot of weight these little ankles now I'm a lot heavier than eight stone double that yet my ankles support my body all the time Although they do give off a sigh of relief when I sit down. As in fact, my whole legs do. My feet, feet also go. Whew, my toes clap. I'm so happy. legs really are amazing and I know that talk, uh, talking about your legs is probably possibly the, one of the most in, most boring things you've ever heard anyone say possibly but boring or not everything I said is true your legs are amazing. Your legs deserve not just respect. They deserve to relax deeply. deserve to take some time out of the day to just let go completely Because the legs are so, such a most, you know, a very important part of your body, when you relax your legs, the rest of your body also naturally follows in that 
journey of comfort. I can feel it in my hips. My hips feel really loose. And also my lower back as well. My lower back really feels, it feels stretched. Even though I'm just sitting in a chair and there's no stretching as far as I'm aware that I'm doing. It's almost as if the muscles have just relaxed so much that there is a natural stretch as the tension has reduced a lot. to one and you can continue to feel wonderfully relaxed ten nine eight seven I'm just going to count down from five down to one. And as I count down, if you just focus on the numbers, just the numbers, counting down, and notice how you feel in this moment as you hear the numbers counting down, knowing that those numbers counting down represent you feeling karma not just in your body but also relaxing your mind and just notice how you feel there's nothing to do there's nothing to say there's nothing to think about Starting with number five. Four. Three. One. As you notice the gradual letting go of the tension in your body. You may also begin to notice and be aware of how your mind is starting to slow down. This is just a natural thing that happens. It's not really a special procedure. It's just natural because as your body relaxes, your mind also starts to relax and the more 
the mind relaxes, the more your body relaxes. It's just a continuous circle of relaxation. And there's that calmness that comes from relative quietness. You know, even even if there's background sounds, either your side or mine, it's still going to be quite calm. You know, you haven't got the television on, there's no music in the background unless you're listening to the recording with music, of course. You're very likely not going to be sitting in a room with other people. Of course you might be, but generally it's more ideal if you can do this on your own. So, no distractions. And when you stop thinking about stuff, relaxation automatically rises. A sense of comfort starts to grow. And without trying to build it up into something fantastical or something magical, this is just a natural process, something that's easy to accomplish. In fact, it's almost you know, the sense of relaxing completely happens really when you put no effort into it. It's not something that you can really force. It's something that happens naturally and part of the process of this recording and others is simply to allow you to take advantage of this space, this time, to just let go, to just be here, to be in tune with how you feel. Yet with the intention of wanting to relax deeply. You know, maybe even to fall asleep depending on what it is that you wish for yourself in this moment. As we know, relaxing is the majority of the process of falling asleep. The actual falling asleep part is the tiny bit at the end, the deeper relaxed you become, the easier you find yourself drifting. You can also, if you choose, stay focused on my voice and really enjoy the process of gradually Relaxing each.
each muscle in your body. Effortlessly. And just observing the sensation letting go completely this time I'm going to count from six down to one and you can notice your mind slowed right down sinking deeply into relaxation you focus on your mind, you may notice that there are 
are some thoughts still there, maybe some stubborn thoughts that for some reason perhaps need your attention. Send love to those thoughts, sprinkle those thoughts with love, like little petals from a flower, you just sprinkle it over them, petals filled with love towards those thoughts, to let those thoughts know that you're not abandoning them, you just need them, you require them to just calm down, slow down, quiet down for now. As you focus on those remaining thoughts, as we count down this time from seven down to one, with each number, just imagine sprinkling those flower petals of love, kindness, gratitude. Over those thoughts. Which will allow them to just. Melt away. And relax deeply. With every number. Those thoughts will become more. with number seven.
changing now. Notice how relaxed you're feeling in your body. We're going to focus on your hands. Because the more relaxed your hands are, the more relaxed your body and mind are. on your hands and your fingers. There's nothing needed to be done. There's no clenching of fists or tensing the fingers or anything like that. It's just noticing and focusing Noticing how they feel. Because the more relaxed your hands feel, the calmer your Noticed that your mind is starting to drift. Just on your hands and fingers. Allowing them to experience a real deepening of that relaxation. number from eight down to one you can almost feel that healing and the relaxing energy spreading into your hands
Just being here now. Nothing to think about. Nothing to do. Nothing to say. Everything just feels calmer. This is your natural state of being. This is how you just normally feel when you take away all that other stuff that we add. You know, think about stress and worry and overthinking and anxiety. real 
sense of peacefulness which comes to you very quickly because ultimately it's just a feeling a feeling of comfort almost as if you've gone inside yourself and you've found a special place where everything is peaceful where you can feel relaxed in your natural sense of comfort. A place where you can be you. Where you can accept yourself for who you are. A place where you're not trying to not just love yourself but in some ways more importantly you can like yourself appreciate who you are and that sense of gratitude in the air all around you. And that's also a place where you can actually feel the healing energy soaking into your body. Soaking into your body. And that healing energy spreads through your veins. Traveling to each and every single part of your body. start to realize that actually that healing energy has not just entered into your brain, it's become part of your brain. And that spinal fluid is now mixed with healing energy. Not just allowing you to feel so much more relaxed and healthy in this moment, but also you start to realize that actually what's happening now with that healing relaxing energy spreading through your body is actually changing your life. It's actually changing the way you're going to feel, not just now, but tomorrow and the next day as your health improves. Not just your physical health, but your mental health. Things that used to bother you in the past, for some reason, no longer have the effect that they used to. Because something has changed deep within you. Maybe 
the things that used to cause you to feel anger no longer have that power to control you the way they seem to be able to before as you realize that you are the one who decides what affects you. You're the one who decides to feel relaxed and calm when you choose to enjoy Noticing these natural developments of healing continuing to grow and improve your life day by day. Including, of course, your ability to relax so much easier and sleeping is the most natural thing in the world to you because falling asleep is something that you've done that you were born as we all were with the ability to fall asleep naturally we were born with that ability to just drift off into a deep healing sleep Even when we're kids, sometimes we'll fall asleep when we don't even want to. We jump down, we'll stay awake. Maybe it's a birthday in the morning or it's Christmas or a holiday or something we look forward to. We don't want to go to sleep. But the more we want to stay awake, the more we just start to drift. the more you fight drifting, the more you try and stop yourself from drifting asleep, the deeper and stronger that drifting becomes. Because we're born not just with the need to relax deeply and to naturally fall asleep. It's our birthright. It's part of our DNA. And sometimes as we get older in life, perhaps at times we have forgotten that relaxing completely it's not only a wonderfully pleasant experience, it's also really easy. Because that's all it is, it's just deciding to let go. And when you press
press the play button on my recordings, you have given permission for my voice to relax you. When I press that play button, you have given me permission for my words to affect you in a positive positive way, opening up your mind to useful and healing suggestions. effect on how you feel right now, as well as those changes that continue long after the recording ends, those changes within Continue to flourish and grow. Transforming your life in a positive, beautiful way. Allowing you to move forward in your life in the direction that you choose for yourself. And this feeling, this feeling that you can experience of safety, comfort, calmness, This feels so nice. It's such a healthy place to be. And that positivity grows within you. physically and in your mind is more relaxed and it's not that you're thinking slower it's just that your mind will be less clogged up with unnecessary negativity Because from now on, your mind rejects negativity. From now on, you're going to start noticing when negativity arises. And you can just say stop. Negativity will turn around and leave you alone. Stop. And that negativity will disappear. And 
that you notice that you feel way more relaxed than you probably expected. You can now congratulate yourself because you're the person that has done this. You are the one that has opened your mind up to the simple facts that you can feel more relaxed in your body and in your mind. You've opened your mind up to the birthright of being able to just fall asleep easily when you choose. And that's a nice feeling, don't you think? Feels nice, doesn't it? To feel spreading through your body and your mind. To spend time in that, that special place where negativity can no longer enter. Negativity is banned, it's barred, it's not allowed entry. Doesn't doesn't des doesn't deserve to be here, doesn't belong here. Negativity has no place in your life. room for more comfort, more healing, more relaxation, more peace. doesn't it, to just to let go of everything, and I'm going to count down now from 20 down to 1. Continue to relax. If you choose, you can drift to sleep. With every number, you hear me say, you can feel twice as relaxed. If you choose, you can feel twice as sleepy. But now, twenty.
this is your time to just take a break. Your time to relax, to allow your mind to slow down. Give yourself permission to take a break from everything and you're the only person that can make that decision. You're the only person that can actually tell your mind Just relax. To just take some time off. So that you can focus on your body getting in touch with you feel physically and in the process of this body scan where you focus on different parts of your body those focus on and observe, even though you're not purposely requesting for those parts of your body to relax, it's kind of expected, you expect when you listen to my voice to feel more relaxed, naturally. Because when you're listening to me, your attention is focused on my words. And as my words guide you to focus on those parts of your body. focus increases which actually calms your mind and when your mind calms down body relaxes. And when your body calms down, your mind relaxes. focus on your body, you can already feel that healing energy spreading through your body, pushing out stress and tension. of your body, including your skin, your bones, your blood, all of your organs inside your body, all of your muscles. 
versus all of the fat all of everything your deep air in your body is filled with that healing energy and then your brain filled relaxation increases deeply increases in a way that your mind starts feel perhaps a bit drowsy because it's not needed and your mind starts to drift what's needed. So if you're listening to this and what you need is deep relaxation, that's what you'll get. If what you need is to fall asleep naturally and easily as your mind drifts, that's also is by pressing that play button on the podcast and listening to me, you give permission to your body and your mind, in fact, you give the command to your body and Drift off to sleep if that's what you want or need. And as I focus on the different parts of your body, focusing on different parts of your body. that drift off is basically you already in the sleep zone. And the more you drift, the longer you drift, and the longer you drift, and eventually that drift off continues to sleep and that's the last you remember 
let's focus again on parts of your body. Focusing this time on your forehead. Now on the mouth, the lips, your tongue, the whole of your mouth. Focusing on the fingers. Maybe you could move your fingers a little bit so you can focus on each one individually. focus on both of your hands now they almost seem to just melt into one how does your right hand start and your left hand end almost as if Focusing on the knees. Just noticing how your knees feel. Now focusing on your elbow. Focusing on both of your elbows. 
letting go. go letting go letting start now and I'd like you just first of all just to see yourself lying down on that massage table lying on your front your head is supported your arms are supported and you feel comfortable and the breathing is really easy and you feel feel confident in how you look as well so there's none of that issue of body problems or shyness because I'm a professional and this is a therapy session so none of that stuff matters whatsoever this is about you this is about how you feel and how you can enjoy that sense of comfort and relaxation that comes from letting go and allowing my hands and my fingers to relax you by massaging your body. I want to start off just by placing my hands on the back of your head, just gently, just so you can feel what my hands feel like really on you, so you can maybe feel the warmth of my hands on the back of your head, I want to move my hands to the side of your head, not pressing but just holding them there very gently, maybe over your ears and a little bit on your face, just so you can feel my hands, so you can become accustomed to them. And now put my hands on the back of your head again and gently let them slide down onto the back of your neck. You can feel my hands gently stroking the back of your neck to start with. Just so you can get used to the, the feeling of my hands on your skin. Get accustomed to it. Realise that you're safe. And it's all good. It's all fine. And I'm going to start gently massaging the muscles in the back of your neck. Now 
this is a very trusting situation really because our necks are so fragile and to have someone have their hands around your neck in that way can sometimes be problematic for people which is why massages are quite good because it allows you to relax and to get in touch with trust to feel peaceful and calm and as I massage the sides of your neck gently moving from the bottom of your neck which would be sort of near where your shoulders start I guess all the way up to your jaw ears kind of area, that side of your neck, of course is a lot longer than the front of your neck, and then massaging the, the back of your neck. Especially that area where perhaps we hold tension. And as that area is massaged, you can actually feel a sense of release in the back of your neck. And maybe you can breathe it out as well. Notice how it feels. Notice how you feel. Then moving down to that area between your neck and your shoulders, that muscly area, starting to massage that area on both sides. I mean, this would be the area that a lot of people would massage if they were going to give you like a shoulder massage, even that's not technically the shoulders but it's all the muscles that lead to the shoulders and the neck and again that can hold tension and stress and when massaged sometimes a nice deep massage is useful and if you decide how deep that massage is just to dig in to get to those muscles and to really relax them all the time being firm yet gentle with you Just stroking down that area to your actual shoulders, moving to the muscles of your shoulders, and maybe initially just pulling up the shoulders a little bit off the table, just to give you a little bit of a stretch, but very gently. muscles at the front of your shoulders, the sides and the back. Again, this is a part that can really take quite a bit of pressure, quite a bit of uh, needing, if, if you wish, to really release the tension to really get in 
into those muscles and let your fingers in there and you can feel really nice. Sometimes just being stroked gently or being massaged quite strongly it can all be beneficial for the relaxation. of the muscles in your shoulders. And now you move down your arms. You do one arm at a time, starting with your right arm. do is I'll just lift your arm up, just hold it to the side of you, I want it to still be attached, and I just massage the tops of your arms, all the way down to your forearms, into your wrists. Gently massaging that part, the softer part, which is the under part of the arm. leads to the crease in your elbow, the inside, it's much more sensitive skin, sometimes just having that stroked can feel really nice, pleasurable and relaxing. your right hand, just holding your hand in both of my hands, just pressing gently on the back of your hand and stretching the fingers ever so lightly. same time, pressing down and massaging each finger, and then starting to massage the palms of your hands, just turning the hand gently, stretching it gently, and actually having your hand held can really be an emotional experience sometimes, even if it is with a stranger, someone you don't know very well, like a massage person or a therapist maybe, because it's intimate. safe. And as I put that right arm back down where it was, I'm going to do the same with your left arm. Exactly the same. Massaging the muscles 
you are really down to your wrist. Stroking the inside of your arm. Just being gentle or as firm as you require. And then massaging your left hand. Stretching the fingers. Massaging the palm of your left hand. And it feels so, so relaxing. So comforting. Just rest your left arm back down. And start to massage your back. The biggest part of your body. Starting at the top. Starting again with a little bit in top and between your shoulders, near your neck, going back, massaging that area again, but this time moving downwards, having a downward stroke to the middle of your back, working from the outside Massaging the, your back, but the, the outsides of your back. The parts where your arms would maybe rest against. your front to your back, and just massaging down, firmly, but gently, as firm as you want. a little bit and moving all the way down again, being very gentle, and yet firm as you choose, and eventually you get to the spine, you can massage the muscles on either side of your spine, from the top of your neck all the way down. Your lower back. You can do that a few times. Sometimes people choose the knuckle or the you know two fingers and just go either side of the spine. Almost just push down, go all the way down to the bottom of the spine. Each time, releasing tension and opening up your body, stretching your body, so that you feel more relaxed, but at the same time, rejuvenated. to one 
left side to your right side. bottom of your ribs to your pelvis and you're going to massage that area of your back I'll stretch over the other side and I'll pull the muscles gently and massage and push from one end that side all the way to my side to the middle in fact to where your spine is Massaging that side of your spine to the opposite side to where I'm standing. It's almost like kneading bread. There's that big area which is firm. Yeah, lots there to massage. Potentially one of the most important places to actually have a massage because you really feel it you really feel the release and the pleasure of having your lower back massaged it releases so much in your body that's not useful starting a healing process will continue long after this recording is over. Massaging this part of your body not only feels really good for you, but it's actually fun to do because it is, as I said, like kneading bread. It's a part that you can really get a hold of and really massage deeply if that's your choice. And then I'm going to move over to the other side of your body and do the same with the opposite part. kneading and massaging from the sides all the way to the middle of your back where your spine is. Pressing and kneading. Firm and gentle at the same time. But it feels so releasing. This mixture of pleasure, comfort, release, calmness, relaxation, all mixed together. Plus there's that feeling from your stomach as it's been stretched. Even though you're in your stomach now, you can feel it being stretched because that whole area is connected to your stomach. Now I'm going to move, we'll move further up to the top of your body and I'm going to do the same. This time starting with your upper back, put my hands forward over and mass massaging that area up to your spine from the side of your body up to your spine so some of that massage area the muscle tissue um, or whatever fatty tissue even will be possibly from the chest so it's all connected to the chest from the back bring it together I'm going to be massaging and just pulling some of that skin from the side up and massaging that area of your upper back all the way to your spine. And then I'll move 
down a bit and continue with the middle of your back doing exactly the same thing. As gentle or as deep as you choose. Now I'll move off to the other side again and do the exact same thing with the top of your back on the other side from you. Pretty much underneath your arm area, really. To your spine. And then continuing that all the way down, including your lower, your middle of your back. to your thighs, the backs of your thighs, and the sides of your thighs, starting with your right leg, massaging the back and the sides of your thighs, gently and firmly. There's a lot of muscles there. It's an area that can be very tense at times and maybe needs a little bit more pressure than the rest of the body. But that's up to you. You can gently stroke the back of your legs where, you know, opposite your knee joint or underneath your knee joint very sensitive, gentle area. Then working down to your calf muscles, massaging the calf muscles thoroughly and deeply if you choose. of your back of your ankles just gently massage in that area maybe lifting the leg and stretching it a little bit moving to the right foot. Massaging the bottom of your feet and the sides of your feet. Gently but Firm enough so they don't tickle. And just allow the pleasure that you get from having your feet massaged to just overtake you. As I continue to massage your feet, the bottoms of your feet, your sides, your arches, your heel. You can put a lot of pressure into your heel and it feels amazing. Yet the arches need to be a bit more gentle. Stretching your toes gently. Massaging the bottoms of your toes 
with my fingers, each one individually. And moving over to the left leg to do exactly the same thing. Starting at the top of the thighs working the back of the thighs and the sides, massaging deeply and gently that whole area, working all the way down, this is an area that maybe you could like to spend more time relaxing and massaging, so perhaps if you wanted like a bigger future recording, go and spend more time in one particular area, as you move down to your calf muscles. Massaging your calf muscles firmly and gently. Moving down your ankle into your feet. Massaging the backs of your feet, bottoms of your feet. Stretching your toes and massaging each toe individually. And that feeling of pleasure, of release that you've experienced with your having your feet massaged. Feel it beautifully. Turn over in your mind, laying on your back. I'm just going to start again at your neck area. In your shoulders. Just to Get back in touch with that area. As you move up. I can clean my hands. Make them all fresh. Because now I'm going to massage your face. Fingers. Starting off with your forehead, if your eyes are closed and you can just stretch your eyes a little bit, pushing up on your eyebrows, and just massaging around your scalp. Massaging down your cheeks, around your ears, into your jaw, gently. The sides of your neck, your chin. Moving down from your neck down to your chest, starting by massaging the very top of your chest, where the 
collarbones, from the side of the collarbone. And just massaging the whole of the chest. chest around, it gives us quite a large area that we can move from one side to the next, moving with my hands underneath pretty much where your arms are. some of the muscles of your back in the process. Moving up over your chest. And moving down again. Just massage gently and slide down towards your stomach, starting in the middle of your chest. And then gradually my hands moving apart, massaging and sliding at the same time, moving down. Just below your rib cage. Moving down and massaging up again. Giving your chest all the attention that it needs to feel completely. So going to be focusing on your sides as well, an area that really doesn't get much attention, but feels really good in its massage. Just stroking my hands down the sides of your body, so just below your arms all the way down to your hips. Now, moving to your stomach area. I'm going to stand one side of you like I did when I did your lower back. I'm going to do a similar process of just stretching the muscles from your side Gently massaging from one side to the next, moving that whole area from below your ribs all the way down to below your belly button. to the other side of you and repeat that. Process of relaxing deeply, calmly, you feel loose, you feel free. And there's something about having your stomach massaged that's different from any other part. Even if you do have a tendency of holding a different kind of stress in your stomachs that we may not be aware of. So now I'm 
inside your stomach, the front of your stomach, as it circles around the belly button. gentleness and a freedom that comes from feeling how you're feeling. As you now move down the tops of your thighs, your muscles are massaging them. I can do this two legs at the same time, pressing down Massaging deeper those muscles in your thighs, in front of your thighs. Moving down to your knees, gently massaging the knees. Sliding down your shins, putting pressure on either side of your shin. Gently, softly, but firmly, moving down to your ankles, stroking the tops of your feet, and then with each foot and each hand. Just gently massaging the whole of the foot, the top, the bottom, the heel, the ankle, the toes, massaging every part of your feet, feels so good just to let go and enjoy Enjoy feeling so deeply relaxed. So much comfort and so many feelings that come just from touching your skin, and you can just lie there for as long as you choose, enjoying the feeling Massaged by me. Enjoy feeling deeply relaxed. do is blow out some candles in your mind. There are going to be a hundred going to blow each one out individually, one by one, starting at a hundred as I count down, all the way down to one, and each time I say a number. Can 
imagine that candle in front of you. And I'd like you to actually physically <sighs> gently blow that candle out. Just this is not a big blow, it's just a gentle and that candle will extinguish. And then I say the next number as we move down and you can just yourself feel more and more relaxed and if you need to sleep you also find yourself becoming incredibly tired and sleepy in fact you may struggle to blow out candles as you feel more and more deeply relaxed sounds where you are, you be aware of those sounds for the moment, just be letting start to just let you have noticed them. they're unimportant where I am I've got the sounds of the birds there's a forest the pigeon that likes to say hello sometimes and there's a little plane that goes by seems important whatsoever. seem to 
rising. So simple. Gonna start by introducing the first candle. This is a hundred. The first candle. This is Positivity grows within you. Relaxation, sleepiness expanding.
all of those thoughts, worries, concerns about the past, thoughts about the future, and even things you've been thinking about today. Just let it all go. Because none of it is useful in this moment. This is your opportunity to just focus on feeling relaxed, allowing yourself to get in touch with that natural sense of peace that we all have within us. It's available for everyone. It just sometimes takes a little bit of effort to set up the right time and place in order for you to just let go. Because when you do decide to let go and relax, that's what your body starts to do. Because you've chosen, you've chosen to just allow your body to unwind. And your mind starts to slow down. And it's a nice feeling. It's a nice feeling at the beginning just to know that you chosen to decide to, to relax deeply and because you've made that decision your body will just follow suit because sometimes all the muscles in your body need is just permission from you Because so often we're busy, we're going from here to there, we're walking around and we're doing stuff. And the body doesn't have any time or space to really relax deeply. So it kind of waits for you to lead the way. Waits for your permission. do give your permission and you give the say so you can say oh no it's time for your body to let go completely and relax totally your body just follows the end of a day, of a very physical day that you may experience in the past, where you get home and you just sit down in a chair, maybe you kick your shoes off and you're like, oh, it feels so nice, knowing that you don't have to get up again for a little while at least, and if you choose, you can just sit there for maybe an hour. Feels blissful. And just by sitting down like that, your body knows that it's time to relax. Your body has been given permission from you. Because it's a mindset. evaporate and the tensions can just drain 
actually vanish. They went like magic, really. Because that sense of relaxation in the body is a very natural state. It's not something unusual. It may feel unusual when you first start to relax if you if you haven't really spent a lot of time focusing and giving yourself this space to let go completely and relax and see more and more stable. But it isn't. It's actually the most natural thing in the world. almost like a literal unwinding. It's like you press a button and all the tension just releases. It's like a wheel, like a cog, like even size of a clock, just unwinding. And it's almost like you could see the, the little wind up knob that's used just going the opposite way to the EG to the wind it up. And the energy, that frenetic, stressful energy gradually winding down, losing its power, losing its strength. As the sense of relaxation becomes stronger, listening to me for a while and your mind goes somewhere else why don't you be in that you're listening to me again why don't you just your mind drift off to sleep which is quite natural because sometimes when we're stressed and tense we're not, may not actually be aware of what we need, whether it's physical or emotional, we need in this moment. But when we allow your body and mind to relax completely, and you let go of all thoughts, concerns, worries, ideas, all letting go allowing them to drop onto the floor you can start to get in touch with the feelings of such relaxation it's, it's feels so nice 
be still, take a seat and allow, firstly, how you feel in your body. I'm not trying to change how you feel, I'm not trying to relax, I'm not trying to move away from any discomfort or stress or tension, but just accepting. Observing and accepting how you feel in the different parts of your body. Just allowing yourself to be exactly as you are. And notice to get in touch with how you actually feel in this moment. Start off by focusing on your hands. Just be aware of your hands. I'd like you to move your hands around, just maybe around your fingers a little bit. Opening and closing your hands very gently. Just so that you can get in touch with how your hands and your fingers feel. Very, very slow movement. Focusing now. Just be kind of an equivalent with your feet as you've just done with your hands. Kind of in turning on your ankles, moving your feet around, moving your toes gently. Very, very gently. Focusing now on your eyes, I'd like you to just focus on your eyelids, maybe you can open and close your eyes a couple of times to really get in touch with how you feel when you do close your eyes, the muscles raising your eyebrows which stretches the tops of your eyes perhaps squeezing your eyes scrunching up your eyes just so you can really get in touch with the inner aspect Focusing on your thighs. And I'd just like you to gently tense your thighs. Just very, very gently. Just enough so you can become more attuned to the physical sensation of your upper legs, the front of your thighs and the backs of your thighs, and noticing and observing how your thighs feel.
muscles and of course some lead to the side of your neck and some lead to the top of your back and to lead to your shoulders and as you focus
everything starts to slow down. Including the thoughts in your mind and your mind itself just starts to gradually it doesn't have to be instant but just gradually starting to it's almost like time is stretched It's a slower pace to maybe what you're used to in your day-to-day -day life. It's a slower movement of energy. larger movements, which are always the case, and when you move your hand, it might seem like it's one movement, but it's lots of minute different muscles moving in accordance with each other. And what happens in this space that we're sharing is we move from that big movement into those smaller movements starting to focus on how your body feels, not just as a whole, not just, oh, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling stressed or tense or I'm feeling relaxed and calm, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling that way. starting to notice that your body begins to present to you small feelings around your body. Small physical sensations pleasurable or not, and maybe resisting the temptation to label them or to judge them, those feelings, or just thinking them, thinking about them as just being neutral, just feelings. concerned, but just noticing what your body is telling you. Feelings in your arms, instead of feeling the whole of the arm, maybe notice those individual feelings in those different muscles and the skin, the hairs of your arms, the maybe the internal parts of your arms, the veins, Just 
being aware of maybe your elbow on your right arm has a certain feeling maybe your left wrist also has same individual physical sensation. What about your forearm and your right arm? Your right forearm particular feeling that you could even give a name to, it may not feel like anything other than just a feeling, you know, it's there. The feelings in your shoulders. Your shoulders, when you think about them, kind of almost like they're the same, you know, the same feeling. Almost like your both of your shoulders are just one thing. They're also one. And when you focus on your left shoulder. right shoulder, maybe you find that you move the muscles a little bit, you can tense the muscles gently, noticing the difference in each shoulder. side of your lower back and the right side of your lower back. You pause that connection to your buttocks and to your hips. And also moving up into the middle of your back. Sometimes, like right now actually, when I focus on that part, when I focused on my buttocks, and when I focused on my, the middle of my back, it almost felt like the muscles in my lower back were being stretched very gently. seemed to happen, the feeling of very gently stretching the lower back. And there's a lot of chest, just noticing what sensations you are experiencing in your chest right now.
so much as the chest considers the collarbone leading to the chest or the chest bone. You've got the muscles in the chest. Of course, if you're female, there's possibly the breasts. If you're male, you've got the different, I might not know different these days, but there may be more muscles at the top of the chest, but at the side underneath, pretty much the same, whether you're a man or a woman, there's muscles there, muscles that stretch out to your back as well as breast tissue that stretches and moves into your back. So just being aware of your chest. Being with whatever feeling there is in your chest. And I notice that I focus on my chest. I feel it in my in my back, my upper back. I guess the obvious reason would be because, you know, I breathe in. But in. And then it stretches my chest and my back at the same time. And it feels... It feels okay. bit of pain in my right chest, a little bit, not pain, but a little discomfort, maybe stiffness possibly, I don't know, I notice my shoulders are also working to flex for some reason, that could be part of my upper back. That connection between my shoulders and my upper back. So I can move my shoulders and stretch the muscles in my back. Moving the shoulders backwards or up, which then moves the, I think it's the scapulas. Looks quite nice actually. The good thing about this is you can, if you want to, you can just flex or stimulate the various muscles in your body gently to get more of a sense of how they feel. And when you're relaxing, and you do tense a muscle, and you let it go, and you let it relax, it relaxes to do that. And the point being it is 
Jordan. Um, and she is a parent to my other brother. She needs to be gentled with some to smile how much have your mind slowed down since we started this recording is your mind right now there's nothing to think about there's just my voice to listen to because you know the intention behind this recording is relaxation the very least for you to feel more relaxed at the end of the recording than you did at the beginning. At the very least. For your mind to slow down. As your body body maybe calming your mind to the point of boredom when you start maybe to leaving you now and imagine it an escape pod in a spaceship a movie a space movie you know and you've got some little pod and it sends them home
physical sensation. is something that you can do yourself in your own mind. A time when you can maybe sit down, maybe just for a few minutes, close your eyes, just try
this time. Just feel relief, tension, the stress, and the anxiety departing.
It is a command, right? Or can it be? Uh, I'm going to make it dark here. Let me make the dark kind of dark. Okay. I think I have to make the dark kind of dark for this to be light. Okay. Uh, I have to bring it kind of somewhere up here.